October, which means we have to do some scary stuff on this channel. So if you're scared, we're gonna be scared together. Nobody's gotta know. Hi, and welcome to my channel. I'm Allie Fitz, and I'm back with another video. And if you're new here, hello, I love you already. Make sure you slap that subscribe button to become part of the Fitz fam today. We pretty lit, it's true. And once you've done that, make sure to follow my social medias over here to stay connected with your girl. And turn on those post notifications so you know all the tea first. Speaking of tea, my song Secret is now available on Apple Music, iTunes, Spotify, and everything else. So make sure to buy, stream, and download today. And also, if you tag me in a screenshot on Instagram of you streaming Secret, I'm gonna like it. Might even leave a comment, all that jazz will happen. And all that jazz, sorry. So yeah, now that that self promo is out of the way, okay guys, y'all know, like I said in the beginning of this video, it is October, one of my favorite months, because that means I won't be judged if I watch like 16,000 scary movies. I'm telling y'all, I watch scary movies year round. December, scary movies. But it is October, which means it is acceptable to do scary things. And it's also Wednesday, which means I like to try different things on Wednesday. So we were about to read some scary short stories on Reddit. Yep, I said Reddit. Reddit is a crazy place sometimes. They be writing some creepy stories. So here we are about to read them. Get your snacks, get your tea, get your chocolate, anything else you're trying to eat, and share. You gotta share with the whole class, the whole Fitz fam, y'all gotta share. But anyways, without further ado, let's jump into this first one. So the first story that we're about to read is called Sarah. Who is Sarah? I guess we about to find out. I'm going to go ahead and explain that what I will be confessing to will already be told to the appropriate authorities by the time it is posted. What? Oh my God, okay, let me not. <clears throat> you may recall the clown sightings of 2016, yes. Well, this is when the story, no, confession takes place. South Carolina, fall of 2016, she was in her mid thirties. She was so beautiful. Her hair was as red as the autumn sunset. Her skin, so pale and smooth. Oh, her skin. Those beautiful crystal eyes that always gleamed in the sun while she sat outside with her flowers. This is getting creepy already. After seeing her on one of my daily walks, I started watching her. She lived a couple houses down and had a husband. No children. It was innocent at first. I would start off just slowing my pace to watch her in her garden. Then it turned to just watching her get ready for the day. Huh? Finally, it became just watching to see what she does from the time she wakes up to the time she goes to bed. I found out her name was Sarah after digging through her trash one night. What? Sarah, such a fitting name. My Sarah. Mm -mm. I started watching Sarah a few times a month, then went to a couple times a week, transitioning to every other day. Then the watching became an everyday activity of mine. It became routine until I was caught. Sarah shouted and screamed to the husband that someone was outside the bathroom window. Furious, the husband ran out and caught me. After leaving the hospital, I decided I was done. <laughs> I didn't like scaring Sarah. I tried to stay away, but I couldn't hold myself back any longer. It was only after a few weeks when I started watching her again, only from my house this time. One day, I was watching her while my television played in the background. The story caught my ear. Residents were worried about a clown sighting in a local neighborhood. The guy was never caught, and this sparked an idea. Who doesn't love clowns? I'm sure my Sarah loved clowns. She couldn't be scared of clowns. That day, I went out to my local Halloween store. I purchased the costume and got myself ready for what I knew was gonna be a good night. Mm -mm. The husband always worked night shift. It's like the universe wanted Sarah and I to be together. She stayed up at night because she was alone and couldn't sleep. I stayed up at night because I hated her being alone. She wouldn't have to if she was with me. I'd hold her, I'd brush her hair, I'd lotion her porcelain skin to keep it soft. Mm? I'd stay up with her. She always watched the same show on her TV. One night, I got too close. I knocked over a flower pot by the living room window. She loved that flower pot. She arranged it every day. She jumped and called her husband since she was startled. I didn't blame her for turning to him. Not after they caught me the first time. Her husband must have calmed her down over the phone because she went right back to watching TV and I went back to watching her. The next night, she went out with some friends for dinner. I went with her and stood outside. Uh-uh still wearing my happy clown costume. I imagined sitting there, laughing with them. I would laugh at every joke she would tell. Before I knew it, everyone else in the restaurant was staring at me. They looked like they'd seen a monster. Some rushed outside, but I was gone. The next night, she stayed somewhere else, which was fine with me, because I decided to stay at her house. What? 
I climbed through the bathroom window. My eyes caught a brush lying on the counter. Filled with her beautiful red hair, I pulled every hair out and stuffed them in my pocket. I then seen the toothbrush she used every morning. My heart raced with excitement. Now was my chance to be one with her, in a way. To taste her. The toothbrush tasted just like I imagined she would. I made my way to her room. I decided to make myself a bowl of her favorite cereal she ate most mornings and watch that favorite TV show of hers. I don't understand what's happening in it, but I would watch every night with her if she would only give me the chance. I already sort of do. Ugh. I must have been sleeping pretty hard because I was awakened by the sound of a car door closing outside. It was now morning. I was still in her bed. I hurried and hid under her bed. My costume rustled as I hid. I thought for sure she would hear me just for my heartbeat alone. She walked into the room and started to undress from the clothes she wore the night before. She was presenting her unflawed, beautiful self to me, and I was waiting patiently for it. Before my heart almost came out of my throat, the phone started to ring in the living room. I was about to make my way towards her, to properly introduce myself so we could start our lives together when her husband pulled up. I decided to sneak back out the bathroom window and went back to my house. Ugh. Many thoughts rushed through my head. That was the closest I've ever been to Sarah. She was literally an arm's length. Sarah was mine. It was after this, I knew we were meant to be together. She was mine and I was hers. Sarah went out again that night and I made my way back through her bathroom window. Except this time, she came home earlier than expected. As soon as I made my way through the bathroom, she walked through the front door, sobbing. I almost wanted to sob too. I hate seeing her cry and she needed a shoulder to cry on. She needed someone to tell her everything was okay. That someone needed to be me, and I was done being patient. I stepped out of her dark hallway with the friendliest look I could muster. Sarah screamed when she saw me. I wasn't expecting this reaction. Panicking, I grabbed a pan from the stove and swung towards her head to stop the screaming. <gasps> she laid on the floor. Sarah looked so relaxed. I sat beside her, holding her, smelling her hair. I held her face tenderly. Something warm trickled down my right hand. It was darker red than her hair. Even her blood tasted sweet. Ew! Sarah soon woke up and I tried to tell her to be quiet. I tried to explain that we could finally be together, but she didn't listen. Why wouldn't she listen? She started screaming again, uncontrollably. I leaned on top of her and grabbed her soft, fragile head and shook it against the floor, trying to stop her screaming. She just wouldn't stop screaming and screaming. I kept shaking and shaking, harder and harder. I could hear a slight bang against the floor with each shake. Then there was a sound, kind of like the sound of stepping on a bag of chips. Finally, the screaming stopped. Finally, she was quiet. Everything was quiet. When looking down, I saw why. Sarah's eyes stared back, wide and gray. Where were the blue crystals I loved so much? Something wet, gooey, and warm was escaping the back of her head. I gently lifted it up and seen some kind of matter oozing out along with the blood. Pieces of bone was cracked all over the floor. There was a hole in the back of her head. I could fix this. I panicked and grabbed tape from the kitchen drawer and tried putting the matter back in the hole. I couldn't hold all of it in and tape it back in time. The gooey pink stuff was pushing out of the seams. I had to hide this. She deserved better than this. We deserved to be together. I decided to give her a place to rest, a place I could see her every night. I placed the brain pieces I couldn't tape back into the new flower pot they were placed outside the living room window. Still to this day, those flowers are beautiful. Now, her husband waters and arranges them every day with tears in his eyes. The sight kind of made me happy. She creates beauty, beauty that is no longer his. That beauty is all mine. Every day, every day, I got to come home to her. I'd always stop to bring her home the most beautiful flowers. They were never as beautiful as her. I'd hold her every night. I would try to brush her hair until none was left. I would lotion her skin that was no longer porcelain. I didn't care. I loved her more like this. She was mine. She didn't scream. And best of all, she still tasted sweet. Ew! What did I just read? Sarah! Oh my God, he just killed Sarah! In a clown outfit. I cannot. No. Keep your doors locked, y'all. Your windows, too. Because folks be climbing through them. No. Next story. I cannot believe what he did to Sarah. Poor Sarah. This better have been just a story. This next one is called What I Hear Through the Baby Monitor. This is why I ain't got no kids. Okay, let's go. Every night, I am woken up by the sound of my only child crying. It starts out softly, but soon gets loud enough that I hear his cries through the baby monitor. I try my hardest to stay asleep for as long as I can. Eventually, I hear my wife enter his room and comfort him. I lay still, pretending I hear nothing as she selflessly tries to soothe his troubled cries. 
Oh, you poor thing, you're freezing cold. I hear her say through the baby monitor. You're okay now though, mama's here. She rocks with him. I hear the squeak of the rocking chair every time it rocks back. I hear his cries muffle slightly and then disappear as she feeds him. I try, desperately try to fall back asleep before the inevitable question comes, just as it does every time my wife goes to comfort the baby. Dear, will you come help me for a minute? My wife says through the baby monitor. I shut my eyes tightly and pretend I don't hear her. Please come. I wrap my pillow around my ears. I need your help, dear. Tears stream down my face. Please, I know you can hear me. Please help. He's so cold, dear. Come in here and help me, dear. I pray to every God I know that my torment will end. And with the rising of the sun, the sounds from the baby monitor fade away. I look around my empty room and breathe in a sigh of relief. On the nightstand, next to the unplugged baby monitor, I see a picture of my wife and our only child. The last picture ever taken of them before the car they were in crashed off a bridge and plunged into an icy river below. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, I was not expecting that. Wow. What did y'all think of that one? That one kind of gave me some chills. I'm scared. All right, so this next one is called The Woman Who Ruined My Life. Tea. I watch her leave for work, walk into the car. I watch her walk into the office. I watch her on her lunch break. I watch her going home, having dinner, doing the dishes, sitting on the couch in an empty house. I watch her tapping on her phone, the TV in the background playing for no one. I watch her get ready for bed, undressing, taking a shower. What? What's up with folks watching folks? Anyways, every day I watch the woman who ruined my life, waiting, hoping, wishing I could do something anything to stop her. I watch her walk over to the mirror. She catches her reflection, remembers I'm watching. She looks back at me and smiles, knowing there's nothing I can do to stop her, knowing I don't have any control over this body anymore. What? Hold up, oh my God, the chills. Wait, wait, is she possessed? What's going on? That was the end of the story. I need more. Wow, wow, she's either possessed or she's like trapped in her own body and she can't control it possessed. Okay, let's move on to another one. So this one is called, you can tell that I'm scared now. I'm bothered. <laughs> this one's called birthday girl. Let's do it. Good morning, sunshine. Time to wake up. I open my eyes and see nurse Judy ready to give me my morning injection. Oh, I sit on the bed and roll up my pajama sleeve. I feel the needle under my skin and the medication flowing inside my veins. The nurse gives me a wide smile. Good girl. You can go to the canteen now and have breakfast with your friends. Friends. I don't have any friends here. My friends are almost 60 miles away from me, enjoying life, learning new stuff, making out at parties, certainly not spending their youth at a psychiatric ward. It was after another anxiety attack at school. I lost control and tried to do something stupid. Now everything seems stupid to me. I passed by Nutsy Nora's room. <laughs> Nutsy Nora, that's rude. Sorry, her yelling is impossible to ignore. She keeps screaming, Kelly and Jenna, over and over again whatever these names mean. I see two doctors rushing to her room with a set of tranquilizers. This place is full of people like her. I don't think I belong here. I enter the canteen and hear a loud, surprise! I look around and see the other patients gathered around a cake with number candles, one and seven, and an inscription. Happy birthday, Robin. Right, it's my 17th birthday. Yay, I totally forgot. I force myself to smile and blow out the candles. The cake tastes like soap or a cough syrup. I hide both candles in my pocket when nobody's watching. I guess it's the only gift I can count on today. I stop one of the nurses on my way back to my room. I ask if my parents are going to see me. She shrugs and walks away without saying a word, bitch. As I lay in bed, I stretch my arms and look at my hands. They look so weird, so damn weird. Maybe it's a side effect of one of the medications? Nurse Judy interrupts my contemplation. She storms in with an afternoon dosage of pills. How are you feeling, my dear? Did you like the birthday surprise? She asks with that annoyingly sweet smile. Yeah, I forgot today's the day. She takes my hand and says, oh, don't worry, darling. It happens to everybody. As she holds my hand, I ask her why my skin looks so strange. Nurse Judy gives me a sympathetic gaze. I think it's normal at your age. Don't you think so, sweetie? Is she trying to make a fool of me? Oh, I've had enough, but I'm only 17. I say imploringly. I don't know any other teenager with hands like these. Just look. I take the candles out of my pocket and almost rub them in her face. You see, one and seven, 17, I bellow. Judy gently takes the candles from my shaking hands. 
Robin, it's not 17. Let me show you the right order. It's seven and one, 71. <gasps> Whoa! I wasn't ready for that one. So she, she was 71 and was thinking she was 17. Dang. Dang, dang, diggity, dang, dang, dang. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I should not be reacting like this. TikTok has gotten to me. Let's do one more. This last one is called Not a Good Time. Hopefully we'll have a good time reading it. Why do I do these things? Craig, there's nothing I can do about it. I got you this job and I put my own ass on the line for you and now I look like an idiot. You've had multiple verbal and written warnings. Enough is enough. It's a safety issue. Sorry, man. I chucked my phone across my living room. The screen exploded. Gummy bits of black glass whizzing by my cheek. Effin' morons. I show up a little tipsy once and they act like I pissed all over the place. There's a knock on my window. I start to turn without thinking about it, but quickly correct myself and look right back at the TV. She's out there again. Tracked her ass all the way up to the 27th floor just to bug me. Please, I'll freeze out here. I turn the volume up. The scratching and tapping get more insistent. I love you. Please, I can't sleep on the fire escape again. I miss you. Not this shit again. Of all days, she picks this one. Just because we dated for a few months doesn't mean I owe you anything. Sleep out there, see if I care. I wittily fire back. She starts crying, always with this shit. In a series of decisive swift movements, I stand up and close the blinds. Sure, I stumbled a little somewhere in there, but they were swift and decisive stumbles. She starts whining out there. Oh, Craig, it's so cold. Ooh -hoo. I don't know why she thinks this stalker ship works. It's unsafe too. I mean, she of all people should know that it isn't safe. She was on the fire escape when it fell last year. Did she die? Is she a ghost? Hold up, a ghost is tormenting him. I'm done with this, y'all. I don't play with ghosts. So those were some short, scary stories that got me a little creeped out. What did you think of them? And which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video and want more scary stories. I mean, it is only the 9th of October. I can keep going. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. Let everybody know about this scary tea. And don't forget to buy, stream, and download my song, Secret, so we can get it back up on the charts. That would be dope. You want to do it? I'm down if you're down. So have a great day in the name of the Lord, and may God bless your step. I'm tired of ghosts. Like, I don't do no ghosts. My house is blessed. Look. Hello, students. If you're seeing this, you have homework. And your homework... Where that chair come from? Your homework for today is just to follow my Instagram. That's easy. 